Okay, well, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome all um, at this early morning hour of, of a last stage of a series of uh, sessions on a relatively dark side of our field, uh, toxicity and safety. Uh, <clears throat> looking at the program today, uh, I noted that uh, fortunately, uh, almost every speaker not only highlight the problems, but also give a solution uh, to those. And uh, on this line, uh, I happen to be the first speaker, so I introduce myself. I am Janos Seveni from Budapest, Samuels University, and I'm going to talk about the risky side of pegulation uh, of nanomedicines and biologicals, uh, namely immunogenicity uh, and immune reactivity. <coughs> um, let me just highlight what I'm going to talk about. Um, I find it very useful to, uh, to for make a forecast so that you can follow where I am. Like a few words on PEG in general um, and PEG-related drugs. Then highlight the PEG paradox, um, the immune side effects despite claims about the opposite, that uh, PEG provides no or prevents immune side effects. And then talking about acute reactogenicity or high personality reactions uh, or CARPA, this has been a subject over many years here, so I will try to go through it uh, quickly just for those who have not seen it. And then turn attention to the uh, long-term immunogenicity for which we have new data, uh, <clears throat> previous evidence in murine models and our uh, pig experiments uh, over the past few months, and then the uh, significance of all this. Well, a PEG, as you all know, um, is a polyethylene glycol, uh, oligo or polymer of ethylene oxide, also known as polyethylene oxide or PEO or polyethoxid uh, ethylene. Uh, it is applied in the industry, cosmetics and medicine widely, and it is widely used among us for uh, conjugating various drugs, for extending the circulation time um, and these drugs include proteins and nanoparticles uh, equally, or, or as uh, nanomedicines. Now, we are all well aware of doxyl being a pegylated liposome, but uh, um, little word has been devoted recently, or in general at this forum, uh, on, on proteins, uh, na uh, namely biologicals. For some reason, it was uh, called as uh, being kicked out from this forum. Well, it's not kicked out because the pegylated forms of uh, antibodies um, are uh, legible uh, nanop nanoparticles. I mean, legal <laughs> nanoparticles, Le legible and also legal. And there are a lot of examples for such uh, pegylated proteins um, already in market. Uh, as you can list, uh, see this list here, uh, I will not... Uh, read it, but uh, uh, you can, you, you know that uh, um, today this is the biggest market, the biggest business, uh, and uh, uh, there's a lot, lot more uh, already uh, in the market than show, showed here. <clears throat> now here is the um, paradox, the PEG paradox, that we know PEG uh, as, uh, as uh, somebody or something very beneficial for us uh, in that it, in, it, by increasing the circulation time and decreasing the interaction with plasma proteins, uh, it, it should uh, reduce the uh, interaction with the immune system. However, uh, this, does, this is not quite the case because, as you will see, uh, pegulated uh, particles and proteins cause these two uh, immune side effects, uh, the subject of this talk. talk. And even if you uh, bring up a PEG in the Wikipedia, uh, you can read here that um, attachment of PEG to a drug or therapeutic protein can mask the agent from the host's immune system or reduce immunogenicity and antigenicity, which is apparent, uh, it's clearly uh, not quite true, so it is a paradox about PEG. And briefly, the CARPA concept, uh, that is to say the um, immune reactions, uh, the concept is that a large fraction of acute hypersensitive reactions or allergic reactions to IV drugs uh, is caused by complement activation 
or that this complement activation uh, is an important factor uh, in these reactions. And uh, many state-of-art anti-cancer and other nanomedicines and therapeutic antibodies have heightened the risk for activate, to activate complement and therefore cause these reactions. <clears throat> there are several um, groups of drugs which are known to cause carpus. You can see liposomal drugs, micellar drugs, and biologicals without, without PEG. This is our subject today. And uh, radio contrast media, enzymes without, without PEG, and miscellaneous small uh, other molecules. Um, CARPA appears at the first uh, treatment, no prior exposure. So CARPA is definitely different from immunogenicity in this regard. CARPA can be milder or absent upon re-exposure. Uh, and in this regard, it is different from a uh, classic allergy and it can spontaneously resolve. Um, there's pulmonary infiltration in animal experiments showing this, and the high reaction rate is also unique to CARPA. And uh, just to remind you the symptoms, uh, it can be mild, moderate, severe. You can read it here. Um, these symptoms repeat many times uh, in this presentation, so I won't read it here. The bottom line is that uh, mostly they are mild or moderate. It does not require any intervention, but if it is severe, then the uh, infusion or treatment has to be stopped. Now, <clears throat> looking at the um, evidence or um, public knowledge about these reactions, uh, these um, lines were downloaded from the internet today, so even today uh, we, can, we can read about Doxil that infusion reactions can occur. Here are the symptoms, the well-known sim symptoms, and again, sometimes life-threatening and maybe fatal. And we can uh, read the same about um, Nagulastra. This is a pegylated protein also known to cause reactions. The, uh, we are going to talk about this uh, today, so that's why I brought up uh, the information Reactions, serious allergic reactions, just the same uh, symptoms here uh, as we see everywhere. Um, running through the list of different um, drugs and um, proteins, I mentioned uh, almost all uh, liposomal drugs uh, are on this list of reactions. And uh, a pegylated protein, in addition to uh, neulasta, or um, or pec field stream, uh, many others. Uh, this is only a small fraction uh, of uh, pegylated proteins which have been collected in this table. Uh, it was collected um, many, year, uh, many years ago. Uh, today, the list is uh, at least five times longer. And <coughs> reactions to marketed monoclonal antibodies, uh, I, probably it is not um, exaggeration to say that almost all um, monoclonals uh, show the reaction to uh, smaller or less or, or more or less degree, but um, this is a general phenomenon. And <clears throat> what is important for CARPA is that we have a, a very good animal model, uh, the pig model, uh, which is um, briefly uh, shown here. Uh, if we uh, inject the uh, animals with, uh, with doxil, uh, a sudden uh, drop of blood pressure, uh, rise of pulmonary arterial pressure, um, and uh, arrhythmias, and uh, many other symptoms, skin reaction, uh, we can see. So uh, we find, we, um, we say about the pig model that at the moment this is the most sensitive uh, model of CARPA. But as you will see, um, this is not at all sensitive uh, compared to what we see if we immunize the animal with a pegylated particle or protein, which I'm going to show you the next slides. But before that, let me just mention what is the evidence at, until to date about the immunogenicity of nanoparticles, of pegylated nanoparticles. The accelerated blood clearance of a, a second dose of pegylated liposomes um, was described first, first time in Hellstrom uh, Laboratory, who is here. And later on, um, a Japanese group, Ishida and, and co-workers have studied a dozen of publications about this phenomenon showing that the injection in, in rats and mice of uh, pegylated particles or pegylated proteins induces anti-peg antibodies. And the phenomenon of ABC, the accelerated blood clearance, uh, which is shown here, 
uh, uh, demonstrates that uh, upon rep repetitive administration uh, of the um, uh, particle pegylated liposome uh, leads to accelerated clearance uh, from the blood, so it makes the particle use this uh, as a drug. And they actually show complement activation as the mechanism. Uh, they claim that complement is activated, then um, as a as a consequence, uh, antibodies are formed in the spleen by B cells, and then these uh, B cells, these antibodies uh, bind to the particles, which get then rapidly taken up because of the opsonization as a consequence of complement activation. And that is uh, behind the ABC phenomenon. Uh, another puzzling observation which uh, attests to the presence of anti-PEG antibodies is the fact that um, there are many publications nowadays showing that uh, 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 at least 30 or 40 percent of, of us people have such antibodies in their blood. And the, the origin of these antibodies is absolutely not known. There are guesses, could be uh, related to cosmetics or any other daily use items, but we do not know. But <clears throat> um, the experiments, uh, which uh, I'm going to show you uh, in a few slides uh, ahead, uh, in pigs, uh, you will see that the model will allow us to identify the mechanism of uh, immunogenicity of pegylated uh, proteins. And uh, this is a reminder uh, what we use uh, in these experiments, uh, doxibo, which is a doxorubicin-free uh, doxyl equivalent uh, liposome. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we immunize pigs uh, uh, with these uh, liposomes. Here is the, uh, the protocol. Uh, pigs are immunized on day uh, zero um, with or without uh, doxil. And the reason why we apply doxil is to see what happens if we also um, inhibit the immune system, at least with doxorubicin. And then we take samples at uh, uh, <coughs> regular times at week one, two, three, four, and six, and um, uh, we use a, a ELISA, a, a homemade ELISA to detect uh, anti-PEG antibodies, and here is the staggering observation what we have got. After a week, um, there is uh, tremendous immunogenicity, much more than in the rat uh, of uh, Oxibo. Uh, this is IgM. And if we amplify the axis uh, using a logarithmic scale, we can also see that initially, after administra um, uh, the administration of the, of the um, Doxibo, the antibody level goes down, so this is considered as a natural antibody, and then uh, it goes up at one week. So the conclusions from these experiments are, are these. Doxibo is highly immunogenic, leading to massive production of anti-PEG antibodies, which is primarily IgM. Uh, it peaks at, eight, um, at day eight. Uh, the antibodies decline over six weeks. IgM and IgG responses have the same kinetics, which is important. IgM response is much uh, stronger. Initial titer is not zero, uh, implying natural antibodies, and there is an initial decrease at day one and day two, uh, which implies, suggests that doxy doxibo binds natural antibodies. And I have to tell, although not too long, that this kinetics of antibody formation is consistent with so-called uh, T-cell independent um, immunogenicity, uh, which is which is um, taking place in the spleen and the B cells, the so-called marginal zone B cells, and this is a so-called type two immunogenicity. Uh, importantly, regarding the specific specificity of these antibodies, we find that uh, when instead of doxibo, we immunize the animals with nebulosta or anti or, or PEG field gastrin, where there is no phospholipid, uh, we get the same immunization, although the titer uh, is somewhat lower, but uh, at day seven, uh, there is tremendous in increase, which shows, uh, which uh, suggests that the, these antibodies are not directed against the phospholipid uh, in the uh, PEG-P, which we use uh, as antigen in the assay. <coughs> this is uh, just a flush, flashing the fact that uh, antibodies are bound by uh, injected doxibo on a time scale of minutes, uh, which explains uh, the phenomenon of uh, corpor. 
and <clears throat> when we inject doxibo or the protein um, at the time when the antibody level, level is, is high at its top, then the reaction, um, then CARPA becomes ex exaggerated, amplified. Um, we get a huge reaction. Um, it is not tachyphylactic uh, as normally, and actually um, uh, three out of four uh, animal dies uh, under such conditions, or at least died in our um, experiment. Uh, under the um, symptoms of anaphylactic shock. And this is illustrated here. The blood pressure uh, is um, falling uh, in a matter of minutes uh, to uh, zero, and we have to salvage the animal with epinephrine in order to, um, uh, to avoid death. And we, uh, another interesting observation is that um, uh, when we immunize the animal with uh, with neulasta, um, then administration of neulasta does not cause reaction, but um, administration of doxibo uh, again uh, triggers the huge reaction, which implies that the immunization with neulasta produces IgM antibodies that, that cross-react with doxibo, causing amplified um, carpa, but neulasta itself does not cause reaction, which uh, suggests that uh, CARPA is more complicated than simply binding of antibodies to the particles. Uh, probably depends on the uh, inducer size, the liposome size. Liposomes are big enough to trigger the reactions, whereas um, the uh, pegylated protein itself is not. It is immunogenetic, immunogenic, but not uh, immune reactive in, uh, in these experiments. So to conclude, Pigs provide a new functional model, and I emphasize his functional uh, because uh, there are no, to my best knowledge, there are no other immunogenity models uh, which where, it, where the endpoint would be a functional change. And here, the functional change is uh, quite serious. It's an anaphylactic shock or anaphylaxis. And different pegylated nanoparticles induce anti-peg antibodies that cross-react with the inducer peg nanoparticles. However, triggering of CARPA have other preconditions as well, not only antibody binding. And uh, pre-existing uh, natural anti peg antibodies explain uh, doxyl-induced CARPA antibody. The lack of immunogenicity of doxyl may be due to the t cytotoxicity of B cells. I, I could not spend time on these experiments. But just to tell, when we apply doxil together with doxibo, there, there are no antibody formation, there are no reactions. And uh, our data warn to a heightened li um, risk uh, of classical pathway complement activation mediated anaphylaxis upon repeated, and here I emphasize this, repeated pharmacotherapy with identical or different immunogenic nanomedicines. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, that was it. And I don't know if I can give myself, um, okay, then maybe one. Yes, please. What is the question? So is there a way clinically then to deal with this? Is it a rate of infusion that you deliver slowly or do you do prophylaxis with, you know, a combination of an antihistamine, uh, and, and a steroid, et yeah. cetera, to, to prevent this? Not, not only there is a way, but um, these preventive measures are standard today, um, even with nanotherapy. Uh, all nanoparticles, in, even doxil, is nowadays administered under uh, heavy premedication with steroids and antihistamines. So, yeah, clinicians are aware of it and want to avoid it, and still they, they show up occasionally. Uh, pre-treatment is uh, not a hundred percent effective. It is not. Yes, th that's the problem. Yes, and um, and these uh, these um, uh, reaction rates, by, which are reported uh, for the individual drugs, uh, usually um, apply to patients who are pre-medicated. Uh, without pre-medication, for example, the reaction rate for doxil was uh, forty-five percent. Well, then I would give the word, the, the podium to the second speaker, Moin Mogimi, who probably doesn't need to be introduced. He comes from all over the, the planet, this time from Durham. 